Okay. More Red Wings news. Um, Tory Krug. Boston's apparently shopping uh, Tory Krug's rights as a UFA. So it's not Tory Krug completely. It's the rights to negotiate with him before unrestricted free agency. So if you haven't seen those deals before, they're usually a lot more limited. So you're going to see something weird like a third and a sixth round pick for Tory Krug. And you're, you're going to go, what? But that's without a contract. It's literally for the honor of speaking to him. Uh, two months before everyone else. How many times are people going to have to correct that online when it happens? Oh, a lot. Infinity. Yeah. Yeah. And and Ryan said third round pick. I don't even think it'll cost that much, honestly, unless there gets to be a bidding war. So. I'll just go and say it. I don't like it. I don't like the idea of signing Tory Krug to begin with. I don't like the idea of giving up any pick to negotiate to possibly sign Tory Krug. Now, let me preface this. If Tory Krug is willing to come here on a relatively short term deal, let's say three to five years, I'm very for this move because then you're locking him into his age 33 to 34 to 35 years. I like Tory Krug enough to think he'll hold up that long. As an undersized defenseman in the NHL, I'm not super sold he'll hold up that long, but I think it's a reasonable gamble. If I'm Tory Krug, am I going to even entertain the idea of a short-term deal? Absolutely not. This is the last big contract of his career. He's out of his mind if he takes anything less than five years, or I'll even say five years or less, <laughs> because... I'll be like, no, man, this is my last contract. Take me to 37 and then let me sail off into the sunset with all the money in the world that I can. Also, if I'm Tory Krug and there's multiple teams offering me big money contracts, I'm not going to the Red Wings. I don't care that he's from Michigan. There's uh, t- what were some of the other teams rumored to be in on this Vegas, Florida, whoever teams that, you know, could actually compete for multiple Stanley Cups under his contract. Yeah, I, that also seems like a better option for me. So if I can get very similar money from a better team in a better position, and depending on the team in a better in a better weather uh, region, I'd be very inclined to do that. Re- Detroit is still a destination destination for free agents when they're good. They're not going to be that in the next couple of years. So. I get why people are excited about Krug. I I honestly, as much as I say I'm against this move, if I see Tori Krug walking out in a Red Wings jersey, part of me is going to get real giddy. Um, But I just, I don't see the, the reality where the Red Wings turn it around quick enough to get value out of whatever contract Tori Krug signs, even if it's only, you know, four or five years. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is a lot like the Markstrom thing for me, where it's like, Brad, I think fundamentally everything you just said was correct. Like, if you break this down into like a a moves on paper, yeah, Detroit has a window where they can reasonably start competing, and that's not soon. Unless a lot of things shake out for them, like we travel backwards in time and they win the draft lottery, and we travel forwards in time and we win the chain right draft lottery, and, you know, just a lot of that kind of business. That's not the luck that the Red Wings have had. Lately, that's not the luck that the Red Wings have had over the past five years. So I don't count on that window being accelerated. So yeah, how do you turn that into value? But let's double back to what I said last episode, which is that I'm tired of banking on things going right. And I'm tired of waiting for the perfect time to get all these good players. This might just be boiling down to Eisman saying, look, I know it's not likely, but when do you have an opportunity to sign a Tory Krug in free agency? When do you have an opportunity to sign a Jacob Markstrom in uh, free agency? free agency. You don't. It's not very often. He's like, I'm going to take my crack at it. I'm not going to not add a good player just because it's not perfect timing right now. Maybe we don't get good value out of him. We we work it out later. He's like, I, maybe Eisman's thing in his head is I'll pay him more so I don't have to give him a no move clause. So if it's definitely not going to work out for us, we can still move Tory, Tory Krug for value. That could be it. The Red Wings don't want to be a 17 win team ever again. We talked about that before. We've talked about that plenty of times. It's okay to be the worst team in the league while you're rebuilding because it maximizes your chances of winning the draft lottery. You cannot be as bad as Detroit was last season. Plain and simple, it is awful for the team. It shakes them to their core. They won't, like, and I as a fan, 
as much as I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm future thinking and I'm, I'm thinking about wanting to the Red Wings to be competitive and competitive in a sustainable way where year after year after year, like the Tampa Bay Lightning are right now competing for the cup, that of course I want that to happen. But like you said, Brad, I'm not going to be sad about seeing Tory Krug in a Red Wings jersey. You have a chance to sign the hometown kid who is the, the premier UFA. You got to do it. You got to try to make those moves. All that said, I think this is a – we're going to take a crack at it. I think it's extremely unlikely. I don't think Krug comes here. Well, a, Sorry, go ahead, Evan. I have a better idea. How hmm. about we pass on Tory Krug and wait two years when we have a better outlook at what the team's going to be? And we sign someone like Hampus Lindholm, who will be a UFA, or someone like Seth Jones, or hey, another Michigan person, Zach Wierenski. Or if we want to go back to the Boston pool, hey, there's a Charlie McAvoy available as well. So that's the thing, too, that I I kind of... I, I agreed with most of what you said, Ryan, except for one thing where you said it's not every summer you get a chance to sign a guy like Tory Krug. It and is it, every is. summer <laughs> you get a chance to sign a guy like well, Tory Krug. Screw you guys. It is. There's always free agents. Now, obviously, to varying degrees, like this summer, particularly rare, where you have Alex Petrangelo and Tory Krug on the market. And not necessarily will you get a guy of Tory Krug's uh, skill level next summer or the summer after or whatever, but there's always options available there, whether they're bigger, better, cheaper, doesn't matter. There's options. Names uh, that, yeah, sorry, finish your thought. Yeah. So it, it would be nice. And what, what this basically comes down to me is what would you say is the Red Wings absolute best case scenario for a turnaround? Two more lean years and then all of a sudden they like all the prospects hit and they get real good and then they're in like their young chicago contender window are you really betting on tory krug at 33 years old to be worth the likely seven million dollars he's going to be making that i wouldn't bet on that i really really wouldn't if i was a team that was like oh, one piece away from the cup Okay, yeah, I don't think Tory Krug's gonna be worth seven million, but he's gonna improve our team, so we have to bite that bullet, and that's fine. Like for a team like Vegas, that makes a ton of sense. Um, for a team like Detroit, it just doesn't. It it really, really doesn't. I just mm, can't bring my head around it. So if you need to get really like you really need to sign someone in the next couple of years, like what next year's UFA class isn't ultra great. Um, Dougie Hamilton is the first one that, that pops up to me, obviously would be an excellent addition. Yeah. Um, Brandon Smith's available. I've heard he's a, uh, good puck moving offensive defenseman. Um, <laughs> if we awful. really need to, I, I've heard more, that as well. <laughs> if we need to be more defensive, there's a Patrick Nemeth available as well. Um, oh, if we need a big shot blocker, there's Chris Russell. Um, Next year is not looking super great by a quick one over of um, UFA defensemen, but the Red Wings have nothing but time right now. So the the iron's not hot. You may as well. I yes, having Tory Krug would be awesome, and obviously the team gets instantly better. But seeing who's available two years down the road when we have a better vision of what this team is and if they will one day be a contender, I think. Obviously, Steve Eisenman's aware of this. Well, uh, the thing that is a little confusing to me about this from the timing perspective is I, I know it wasn't the main part of the trade, but you look at the left side of the Red Wings defense now to Kaiser, Nemeth, Stahl, Chalosky. One of them's already not going to be playing. I mean, and it's probably going to be Chalosky, which I, I vehemently disagree with. But I mean, that's the reality of it, whatever. You bring in another left shot defenseman, unless you're planning on buying out Stahl or flipping a lefty to the right side, which then probably knocks Sider out of the lineup. Like, I mean, again, if you were a good team, yeah, you always acquire better players, even if it means knocking a good player out of the lineup. The Red Wings don't have any good players, so we're knocking mediocre players out of the lineup, but mediocre players are top four defensemen for us right now, so... I mean, we, we need to get, like, Cider and Chalosky and these guys ice time. And bringing in Stahl and Krug in, like, a few-day stretch, 
is confusing at the very least for me because that is now going from the bare minimum of defensemen to now a surplus that I'm not sure how they would handle unless they just say screw it and buy out stall. Hey, Mark, thanks for your tenure. Uh, Go sign with a contender. I think it's a combination of two things. I think it's one, what you said, Brad, where it's like you always take an opportunity to grab a good player. And if he bumps out a good, uh, uh, another player, then that's kind of just how it works out. You never pass up an opportunity to improve. And two, I think Eisenman's saying, we don't even know when we're playing hockey next. I'll deal with it when I deal with it. I'm just going to do my thing right now. I don't know that he had, like, I, I don't know that he's going into this with a rigid thought. I think he's taking opportunities as he sees them. All of this is also to say that it's an actual true fact that the, that Detroit is going to be, you know, a big suitor for Krug. One, I, I don't know how much the hometown advantage waits for Krug because Detroit's not a competitive team and won't be anytime soon. Um, and two, are people just are saying this because Krug is from the area? Like, if well, he wasn't, would there be – I mean, that's a stupid question. But is there anything substantiating this other than people just drawing the geographical connection or are people just automatically doing that? Well, the, of course, Red Wings fans want Tory Krug. He's a good player and he's a hometown boy. I absolutely get the appeal. And, like, if you were just the casual fan and you saw, oh, my God, one of the, you know, top defensemen on a good team wants to sign in our shitty little team, hell, yeah, sign me up. And, like, I mean, nobody should look as deep into the math and the contracts and the term and the ages we do. But, and I think a lot of this is fan driven, but yeah, I mean, when it's almost like sometimes the prophecy is self-fulfilling, right? You know what I mean? So yeah, if it, you say it loud enough and often enough, maybe it gets the, it gets to the right ear of the right person. He's like, Hey, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But 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 again, just for perspective, the Red Wings have a ton of cap space and they can do whatever they want with it. But if you're putting me like up against the wall and you say you're spending six and a half million dollars for the next five years, you can have either Tory Krug or Jakob Markstrom. Who's it going to be? I'm picking Markstrom like a position where the Red Wings have a bigger hole. I mean, I have more faith in a in a large goalie to play well into his mid thirties than a small defenseman to play well into his mid thirties. So, I mean, if the Red Wings are even going to go big game hunting in free agency, which I don't think they should do, but if they do, Krug isn't even the guy I'm picking. Mind you five plus years for a goalie right now for Detroit is that goalie's life. It'll feel like 10 years. Oh yeah. He'll age exponentially fast. (laughs) Yeah, we all we've all seen them interstellar. Yeah, we've all seen the memes of Barack Obama when he started his presidency to the end. Markstrom would be that times five. Yeah, we need Bernays before and after. (laughs) It'd be like Benjamin Button. (laughs) Jimmy Howard actually um, filmed the season or filmed the uh, aged Captain America from Avengers Endgame. That Uh, that was just Jimmy Howard with no makeup. If Jakob Markstrom played five years for this iteration of the Red Wings, at the end of it, if you put a picture of him directly next to Bernie Sanders, you would not be able to tell the difference. Hey, you keep saying Jakob Markstrom, and a couple of people have pointed out to me that it's Jacob. Are you certain it's Jakob? Nope, but that's I remember that's what it was back in the World Juniors, and that's how I've been pronouncing it ever since, and nobody's corrected me. Because most – so here's – this isn't true, but this is just what I do. If it's a <laughs> okay. European – and I see a J, I just assume it's a soft J until someone corrects me. Because you, statistically, if, I'm right most often that way, but eventually it's not going to be. If you had name controversy on your bingo card, you may uh, cross that one off. <laughs> there we go. All right, hey, it's not a Finnish name this time, though, so we're evolving. Well, I don't know if I'd call it evolving. Um, on speaking right of which, which, thanks for tuning in to the Winged Wheel Podcast. Be sure to check out wingedwheelpodcast.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll also find links to other ways to support the show, such as Patreon, official podcast apparel, and more. And don't forget to follow the show on Twitter at Winged Wheel Pod. And of course, the hosts at Brad Crisco, at Ryan Hanna WWP, and at Hockey Town Evan.